Welcome to the first video on Scottish Gaelic for the Monash Lingsop. It's Mr. Rernich, my name is Rernich, or Rachel, and the committee have asked me to spend this semester telling you a little bit about this weird language I speak, starting with the language spotlight in the most recent World Cup. If you have any questions about Scottish Gaelic or about one of the other Celtic languages, please let me know, and I'll try to cover it either in the blog or here by video. The next thing we've got planned to cover in the blog is a little bit about grammar, so before that I'm going to introduce you to the Gaelic alphabet. In English, we're used to talking about A to Z, but the Gaelic alphabet has only 17 or 18 letters and goes from A to U. There are five vowels, 12 consonants, and the letter H, which is the lenition marker. And that's the other thing you need to know before I start talking about grammar. The two very important concepts of lenition and slenderization. A neutral consonant mutation is a feature of all Celtic languages, but Gaelic only has the one mutation, lenition, also known as smoothing, softening, or aspiration, and probably some other things. Usually it's indicated by an H following the consonant, um, except with a few letters such as L, R, and N. Um, but in older texts, it's also written as a dot above the letter. Mostly it changes stops into fricatives, mostly. Slenderization means palatalization and is indicated by using the high front vowels, E and E. Lehenry lehen is curry curd is the most important rule of Gaelic spelling, both Irish and Scottish. Not Manx though, because Manx is best read with the eyes closed, as a wise old girl girl once said to me. Broad consonants are made with the tongue curved out and space behind, while slender consonants are made with the middle of the tongue. So, even though the Gaelic alphabet has just 17 letters and only 12 consonants, each of those consonants has theoretically four different sounds. Broad and unlinited, broad and lenited, slender and unlinited, and slender and lenited. That said though, not every letter has four distinct sounds, as we'll see with the first letter we're going to cover, or the first consonant we're going to cover, B. So for, starting with the unlinited Bs, both broad and slender, it's a sound that does exist in English, but we don't really think of it as a sound. You may remember in first year, we listened to a recording of someone saying the word spin, but the S had been taken away, so it sounded like bin. Um, because the consonant is both um, unvoiced and unaspirated. And that's the sound we need in Gaelic for the B. The slender lenited B is pretty much the same as just a V in English, a V. Um, while the broad lenited B can be anywhere but from V to W, so the best option to go with would be the bilabial fricative W. Um, that's W. Um, it does get more like worth the further south you go, so up in the north it'll be always fur, and down in Ireland it's always worth. Now, moving on to C is where we encounter pre aspiration, which is a puff of air before the um, consonant. I think I read somewhere once that there isn't any language where pre aspiration constitutes a meaning difference. Well, that's not true, because there is in Gaelic, there are a lot of words, minimal pairs, where one is pre aspirated and one isn't. Um, for example, the word that string, springs to mind to me immediately is Ecke, which is to him, versus Echke, to her. Um, there are others like At, which is a hat, versus Acht, which is to stir something. So we have Achke, the um, broad on the United Sea, and Ichki, the which is a little bit further forward in the mouth, and that's the uh, slender on the United Sea. The broad lenited C is pretty much what you'd expect. It's the ch sound that you'd get in loch or bach, so ch. And the slender lenited C is like ch in ich in German, so ch sound like hissing. The broad unlinited D, um, again similar to English, except unaspirated, so it's unvoiced and unaspirated, so the, the. And the broad lenited D is a sound that doesn't exist in English. Um, it's similar to the broad ch as in loch, except it's voiced. So r rather than ch. Actually, D is pretty much entirely sounds that don't occur in English. And in fact, I don't even know how to IPA the um, slender unlinited D. It's similar to the J in English, except where J is made with the tip of your tongue. Um, for this sound, you put the tip of your tongue on the back of your bottom teeth and make the sound with the middle of your tongue. So, J. And the slender lenited D, again, is similar to a Y in English, yeah, except it's closer to the palate. So, it's more like, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. In, for F, the unlinited forms are pretty much just like F in English. The slender linited form is like the slender linited, no, not linited form of D, so you've got Y yeah again. And the broad linited, like 99% of the time, isn't pronounced at all, and there are about three words where it's pronounced like an H. The broad G is again similar to English, but devoiced, so it sounds a bit like a K. And the slender unlinited G is again further forward in the mouth, so rather than G, it's G. It's just a very subtle difference. The linited forms are the same as the linited forms of D, so we've got R for the broad and Y for the slender. The broad L sound I do believe exists in English, but it's one of those ones that we don't really think of as a separate sound. The dark L, um, it's the sound in Gaelic, the sound that's in LA. It really um, feels like there's quite a bubble of air behind the tongue, so that's LA. The slender unlinited L, again, um, is made with the tip of the tongue on the back of the bottom teeth, and you make the sound with the middle of your tongue, so it sounds like a L and a Y smushed together. Y, Y, and um, it just becomes like a normal English L when it's lenited. The unlinited M's are pretty much just like an English M, and the lenited forms um, go the same as the lenited B's. So with slender you've got V, just like an English V, and for the broad you've got the bilabial fricative V. The broad N's are just like a normal English N. The slender N, well the slender unlinited N, again, you put the tip of your tongue against the back of your bottom teeth and make the sound with the middle of your tongue. So that's N, N. Um, uh, but when it lenites, it goes back to the normal English M. Unlenited P's are just like an English P, and lenited P's are just like an English F. So pretty much what you would expect intuitively as an English speaker from the spelling, which is nice. The broad R is pretty much just like the R you use in Australian English, except that you've got to pronounce it at the end of the word, so R. Um, and the double R is more like the trilled or rolled R that you might hear from a Scottish English speaker. So we've got R for the broad and R for the double. The slender R is pretty much the most contested sound in Gaelic because everyone has their own uh, opinion on how to pronounce it depending on where they're from. Um, but I'll tell you the two most common I, as far as I've seen. Um, the, probably the easiest to get at for Australian English speakers is this um, tap which is like the double T in butter. Um, so adder. Uh, but the other one that I use more often is um, a bit like this, but a little bit further away from the teeth, so th, th. S doesn't have any difficult sounds for English speakers, just some slightly unintuitive spellings. Um, the broad unlinited S is just like s. The slender unlinited S is like an sh in English, so sh. And the lenited S's are just pronounced like an h. With the broad T, again similar to the T in English, but with pre-aspiration. In fact, the only difference in sound between a broad T and a broad D is the pre-aspiration. As I mentioned, there's the minimal pair of at and at. Um, slender T is pronounced pretty much like ch, except instead of using the tip of your tongue, you put the tip of the tongue against your bottom teeth and make the sound with the middle of your tongue. So ch rather than ch, ch. And uh, lenited T's, again, just sound like H. These are the consonants. Well, except for this one, which is pronounced like a broad CH with a K on the end. So, ach. Five vowels, as you'd expect. I don't say as you would expect, in most there are seven. There are five vowels, a, e, i, o, u. Um, each of these can exist in plain or accented or long forms. E and O have two accent options. So I'll cover that when I get to them. You do, according to the most recent spelling convention, don't have both of the accents, but that spelling convention hasn't been accepted outside Scotland. So um, you do still see it both ways. And as part of the diaspora speaker community, I also don't use the most recent spelling conventions that got rid of the accents. So yeah, I'll give it to you with both accent options. A is just a, and if it's long, it's a. These are both sounds that exist in English, um, so not Make sure you pronounce the difference. Um, some people don't when they're learning, and this makes things difficult because there are minimal pairs. Again, um, for example, bata is a walking stick, bata is a boat. 
E is just E, like pet. When it has an acute accent, it's the same sound but longer. So like the sound in bed, E. And with a grave accent, it becomes more of an E. So Gian, Gian. E is just E, like pit or bit if it's not got an accent and if it has it's the same sound but longer so e that's fairly straightforward and o without um, an accent on it is just o with an acute accent it's the same sound but longer o which we sort of think of in australian english as having an r after it in scottish english they have this sound for a long o um, and with a grave accent, it's more like the long O we know in Australian English, so it's more of an O sound. U is just like U as in put without the accent, and long and U with the accent, so dun, dun. Malik also has a few diphthongs. I'm starting with this one because it pretty much is like a normal vowel with a short and a long form. So the AGH or the ADH one is equivalent to being unaccented, and that's U. It's not quite the same as er in English, like er, but like the tongue's almost sticking out between the teeth. If someone can tell me how to write this in IPA, I'd be very grateful because I can't work it out. So that's e, and incidentally is the sound of the first syllable of my name. And the with an written just as an ao, it's the same sound but longer. So um, you e. can sometimes see my name spelt with an ao. This is because they are similar sounds and people just pronounce the first syllable much longer, so they spell it with an ao. Um, agh is the more historical spelling. EU has two different pronunciations in some dialects and also a lot with older speakers it's pronounced E like an E with an acute um, in other dialects and also with younger speakers it's often pronounced E um, so for example the word 100 cared or cared the word for grass feared or feared all of these are usually pronounced E um, although in some dialects it is we um, particularly the further south but E. And all of these ones are usually pronounced e, which is like a cross between oi and i, so e. Um, except for the ones that are written with a, which can sometimes be pronounced e, depending on what they're doing grammatically and where you're from. Um, but o i d h c h e is eicher, which is the word for night, so e. I have one final note to end on. Earlier today, an article was posted about the word t and how it's t if it came by sea and char if it came by land. Um, Gaelic doesn't really acknowledge the existence of either of those sounds because t and r are broad sounds and ch and e are slender sounds. So some people write it ti and treat it as a loan word and just say, well, loan words break the spelling rules, so therefore it's t, even though it's spelled chi. Um, the other two words, the other word which is popular that I prefer is um, cha, which is t e a t h a which resembles the word hot, which is why I like it, and also fits the spelling rules. And so it's, yeah, I suppose halfway between T and Cha. Um, and that is the Gaelic alphabet. Um, thank you for watching this far. And yeah, next time someone says to you, uh, Gaelic spelling doesn't make sense, it's so many extraneous letters, like, bear in mind that English spelling makes no sense. Gaelic spelling is consistent. Basically, if you've watched this video and remembered it, you can pronounce anything you see written in Gaelic pretty much accurately. Thanks. Bye. Give you another video. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.